tell me what, what section is it from? This is a section from Nausicaa. Okay, you may go in. Okay. And Jackie Caffrey shouted to look, there was another. And she leaned back and the garters were blue to match on account of the transparent. And they all saw it and shouted to look, look, there it was. And she leaned back ever so far to see the fireworks. And something queer was flying about through the air, a soft thing to and fro, dark. And she saw a long Roman candle going up over the trees, up, up, and in the tense hush they were all breathless with excitement as it went higher and higher and she had to lean back more and more to look up after it, high, high, almost out of sight, and her face was suffused with a divine and entrancing blush from straining back, and he could see her other things too, Nainsook knickers, the fabric that caresses the skin, better than those other petty with the green, four and eleven on account of being white. And she let him, and she saw that he saw, and then it went so high it went out of sight a moment, and she was trembling in every limb from being bent back so far back. He had a full view, high up above her knee, no one ever, not even on the swing or waiting, and she wasn't ashamed, and he wasn't either to look in that immodest way like that, because he couldn't resist the sight of the wondrous revealment half offered, like those skirt dancers behaving so immodest before gentlemen looking, and he kept on looking, looking. She would fain have cried to him jokingly, held out her snowy slender arm to him to come to feel his lips laid on her white brow, the cry of a young girl's love, a little strangled cry wrung from her, that cry that has rung through the ages. And then a rocket sprang and bang shot blind and oh! Then the Roman candle burst, and it was like a sigh of, oh. And everyone cried, oh, oh, in raptures, and it gushed out of it a stream of rain gold hair threads, and they shed, and ah, they were all greeny dewy stars fallen with golden, oh, so lively, oh, so soft, sweet, soft. Then all melted away, duly in the gray air. All was silent. Ah. She glanced at him as she bent forward quickly, a pathetic little glance of piteous protest, a shy reproach under which he colored like a girl. He was leaning back against the rock behind. Leopold Bloom, for it is he, stands silent with bowed head before those young guileless eyes. What a brute he had been. At it again, a fair unsullied soul had called to him, and wretch that he was, how had he answered? An utter cad he had been, he of all men. But there was an infinite store of mercy in those eyes, for him to a word of pardon, even though he had erred and sinned and wandered. Should a girl tell? No. A thousand times no. That was their secret, only theirs, alone in the hiding twilight. And there was none to know or tell, save the little bat that flew so softly through the evening, to and fro, and little bats don't tell. God, I can't put that on YouTube. I will get sued. <laughs> Beautiful. I think you've done this before. This. What draws you to this particular topic? Um, I think I just, I really love how um, romantic and delusional Gertie is. Um, that there's so much evidence against her vision of the world. Um, she's lame, she's a little over the hill. Um, everyone else around her has kind of moved to the next stage in life. Um, but she still desperately holds on to this romantic notion. Um, and even though this episode is supposed to make fun of um, sort of Victorian prose, um, it's beautiful. 
And I think despite itself, um, it uh, is a celebration of this particular style. And for most people, the first time they read Ulysses, this is one of the most accessible uh, chapters. And it was for me as a student. Um, so I think that's why I still really love it.